Welcome to St Andrews, the home of golf, a Power Tea customer since 2004. This Power Tea maintenance video contains all of the information needed to look after your Power Tees and ensure they stay at their optimum performance level. A key part of your maintenance program is going to be having two folders set up. One for the maintenance program itself, another for the fault log. These are really important documents in looking after your power tee. The maintenance program, clean the rubber trim and the surround once a week, clean the control panel and stand once a week, vacuum the standing mat and stripe mat again once a week, clean the hopper liner when you take the fibre built mat up, clean around the ball engine monthly when you take that out to grease the lead screw and the injector rods next to it. And the tee needs changing as and when. The fault log is really important to us as a company. Uh, should you experience a recurring issue in a bay, it helps us diagnose what that issue is and solve it for you. If we deal in anecdotal hearsay, it makes it very difficult because one member of staff tells another, tells another, they then report a totally different bay and a totally different fault. So when you get an issue, write down your date, whether it was a ball engine, the control panel, the ball tray, the hopper, the six-way lead, or anything else. When we complete our training on site, we issue a training certificate to every member of staff detailing what they were trained on. That way, they cannot turn around and say they didn't know how to look after the equipment. Everything you need to look after your power tee is right here. Your toolkit and your spare ball engine in its transit case. We're now going to show you how to change a tee. Here's how we change a tee. It's really straightforward. Even when the tee snapped uh, from overuse, um, you just throw the ball down into the hole, press the new ball button, it'll feel the weight of the ball, it'll then bring that ball up and present itself. We then use the tee change tool, pop that into the stainless steel screw, we lift it out, screw comes out. We'll only fit into the T one way. We'll pop the screw in, pop the T change tool back in, and we tighten it just until it grabs and then we're done. Never over tighten them. That's your T change done. We recommend with your mats, with your stand mats, that you rotate them ideally once a week, if not once every other week. Um, it's obviously very straightforward to do. We just pick our stand mat up, we rotate it round. And we put it in. This evens the wear is you'll end up with a wear patch here and a wear patch here. Really important with the mats is that we take care with the fibre built. Now on the fibre fiber built we have the housing that needs to be kept clean once a week so when we vacuum the mats and we wipe down our rubber trim we just need to pull the stand mat back so we can vacuum in between the fibre built and where it's attached. Also exceptionally important with the fibre built, it has four lugs on each side of the mat. This is what houses the fibre built into the power tee, but it also is built to take the stress and strains of the less proficient golfer who comes down steep and attacks the ball viciously down. This is built to take that pressure and that strain. If the lugs on each side are not housed correctly, the fibre built won't take the strain and you'll crack your tiles. So please make sure that these are always flat and housed correctly within the frame. We're now going to show you how to change a ball engine. The reason for this is clearly the ball's not feeding, not coming up. Uh, it may say ball feeder disconnected. That actually could be a different issue, but we'll run through that shortly. There's two screws holding the ball engine in to the case.
We're going to be careful with our two screws that we don't lose them. We're going to pick the ball engine up. As we can see, we've got the new waterproof lead here. We're going to unfasten it at this end. It has a male and a female connector with the six pins, so it's very, very straightforward to put back. We then remove this ball engine for us to check to try and see what the fault might be. If the T was coming up on a slant, it could be that the springs at the back have pinged off. We'll show you how to replace those shortly. You have your metal box with your spare ball engine in. This has four bolts on the outside. You use your Allen key provided to undo them. The spare ball engine is housed in here the same as it was in the frame. Two screws at the back. So we're going to do those. Remove the spare ball engine from the transit case. Locate the male connector to the female connector. Twist. Watch the cable as we put it back into the ground. And that's your ball engine change done. We've taken our faulty ball engine out, we've put it into our transit case, and we've fastened that back up. Inside here, it would have a, a ball engine return form, which basically tells us what the issue is, what it's doing on site. That way then when it comes back, it's easier for us to inspect and to fix the fault. It speeds up the whole process. Once your ball engine is secure in the transit case, you need to inform us that it's ready to come back. You can either phone us or email us. In the UK, inquiries at powerty.co.uk. We'll pick up the phone, give us a call, and we'll arrange collection. If the control panel screen is reading ball feeder disconnected and you've put another ball engine in, it could well be it's a six-way lead. So we recommend you just try that ball engine in another bay. Obviously, if that works, then we know it's not the ball engine. If it's a six-way lead that's an issue, with the new waterproof six-way leads, the one that's currently in, we cut the end off, leaving us the wire. We then need to get some electrical tape, tape up this end, attach it to this wire, we take the control panel off and we pull it up through. It's the only way, which then leaves this end ready to go to the ball engine and this end to go to the control panel. As part of our monthly maintenance with the ball engine is to grease the main lead screw and the injector rods next to it. Only use our LMX grease that we provide. If you run out, obviously contact us and we'll send you some more out. Don't use anything other than our LMX grease. Obviously we have the paintbrush that we provide. We get a small amount of the grease. We pop it on the main lead screw, two injector rods. I generally recommend that once this is connected, you press the new ball button. As it travels up the main lead screw, we put a little bit of grease underneath and on the injector rods and then it pretty much self greases. That needs doing once a month. Obviously, if you've got a build up of grease or dirt, clear it off first before you put your new grease on. As mentioned before, it's really important that we keep the four lugs on each side of the stripe mat completely flat, ready to go back into the housing. So we line them up, we pull the bar, and slots in, we release, and that's nice and solid now, ready to go.
So now we're going to start to look at the control panel. Sometimes we need to do a bit of fault finding. Um, as I said, it might not be the ball engine, it might be the six-way lead, it might not be either of those, and it could be a sensor on the control panel. And there's very simple checks we can do for that. So we have to switch it off on the on-off button underneath. We're going to give that about 10 seconds just to let it reset itself uh, before we switch it back on. When we come to switch it back on, we're going to press the two buttons in the new ball button and the T-height button. We're going to keep those held in until it says on the screen, release buttons. Keep them held in. Okay, it says release buttons to select the mode. The top button is to accept what it's asking you, the bottom button is to change. So if press it once and it says nudge. And the reason we use nudge is to see if that the control panel is talking to the ball engine and that the ball engine is going through its full range of motion. So it's going right from the very bottom all the way up to the top T height setting. The next we can select is auto. If we accept that, it's going to tell us that the ball engine and the control panel are talking to each other, but it'll only go to the height it was on when you switched it off. So for, if it was on T height 2, when you switched it off, it will only go up and down to that T height, but it will confirm that they're talking to each other. If we go to setup and accept, which I'm going to now, there's a couple of things here. One, it tells us how many golf balls have been hit from this bay. The other thing is we can test the sound and motion sensors. In order for us to do that, We're just going to clap our hands, swing our arms. That way then the motion and the sound is going to show up on, the, on this particular control panel telling me that the sonar and radar are both fine. So we know that this control panel is good. If you was getting no readings, obviously it's a control panel issue. That generally happens if somebody struck the ball and it doesn't load the next ball because it hasn't heard the sound or recognised the sound. So to change a control panel over, uh, we're just going to switch the control panel off. There's two screws holding it into the panel at the back. Let me undo those. We slide it up. You see there's a gap here, it's been housed on that screw. And we've got two screws on the back plate, keeping all the cables in. And it's really simple in here. We've got blue wire to blue wire, brown to brown, and then this lead here is our six-way lead. For those of you who had the previous model of Power T, there's a new lead on here, which is what powers our oscillating hopper. This goes on the circuit board above motor, which we will show you a close-up of shortly. When you swap the control panel over, it's really important that the red and black go in as they were, and they have to be over the motor sign, otherwise it won't work. And we pop the blue back on, the brown back on. So brown to brown, blue to blue, and we're ready to put the metal plate back on. Being careful not to catch any wires as we do so. We're just going to pop our screws in onto the back plate. Position that. Just line it up. Okay, so we've lined our control panel back up. We secure it back in place. We switch it back on and it's good to go. Okay, so if you need to change a rubber trim, uh, sometimes golfers amazingly 
hit them with their clubs repeatedly and you may get a split in your rubber trim. The only way to swap that over is to undo the back corner piece. And then we'll see here the aluminium extrusion here, which is our frame around, which this rubber slides onto and off of. Changing the hopper lid is really simple. We have two screws on this side, two screws on that side. General posi connector. We're going to do the four screws. We slide the plastic casing off. And obviously you get your new hopper lid. Line up the screw holes with the frame. and screw that back in.